In today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make an interchangeable door hanger from start to finish. Hi, I'm Crystal. Welcome to Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button as well as that notification bell down below so you don't miss any of our crafting tutorials. So let's go ahead and go over here and go over supplies. So you guys can see here, I've got some bags to go through. So let's go ahead and jump into it. These are the ones that I use all of the time. They do come with the ribbon and all of the things inside for your wood browns. E6000 glue that I got for this. And then I also got these greenery pieces. Once again, grab these at Hobby Lobby. I love them. They're super cute. These are gonna be perfect for up here at the top of our sign. I grabbed two of those. Next up, we got our ribbon. I wanted to show you, you can get ribbon over in the ribbon section or the fabric. Usually it's 50%. Once again, shop that because for five bucks, you could get it for 250. I got this one. This one has no wire, but I would recommend for something like this using the wire. Now, here's the really exciting part. I looked all over Hobby Lobby. Me and my daughter went up and down the aisles. We could not find the magnets. So we weren't gonna go to the Dollar Tree. My daughter's like, let's check the Dollar Tree. And I was like, I really don't. They have some. Then last second, I was like, let's go in the Dollar Tree. First spot we went to in the craft section. I don't know if these are newly there or what, but I stacked up. The ones I recommend have 12 pieces. There's one that has 14, but the 12 pieces are a little bit bigger. Now that I've showed you guys all of the supplies that we're using today, I have actually switched it up. I did not run back to Hobby Lobby. I actually had a smaller wood round. It's actually similar to the ones that we're using for the interchangeable piece. This is the one where I showed you guys the different packages that they have at Hobby Lobby. They're a little bit thicker than those ones there, but this is gonna be perfect and it's a little bit bigger. So this guy, I told you guys, was just too thick and I wasn't having it. So this guy is gonna be perfect. So I just wanted to mention that I did switch it up. The very first step we need to do is cut out our adhesive vinyl using a die cutting machine. Now you can definitely feel free to use a silhouette, a Cricut, whatever die cutting machine that you have. So today I'm actually using my Cricut Explorer 3 and all you're simply gonna do is get your designs in there, upload them, size them out, and then you're just going to cut them out. All right, so let's go ahead and hit that go button. While we're cutting out all of our adhesive vinyl, this is the perfect time to go ahead and paint all of your wood rounds. So I'm going to actually be painting all of these ones white. It just worked with the designs that I was doing, but feel free to change them whatever color you want. So if you want black, you know, navy, whatever color background that you're wanting, but it just so happened that all of the designs I was doing, the backgrounds were white. So I'm gonna paint all of these white, and then the bigger one, I'm actually going to paint it black, just to give it a little bit of a different dimension and color. So you could definitely paint this the same color. If these were all gonna be white, this could be white. But I'm gonna paint it black because I want to have that little bit of a difference. I'm gonna be using chalk paint today. I'm using these two right here. These are actually from Walmart and they're around a dollar or so. You could definitely grab these at Hobby Lobby, your local craft store, but you can simply pick these up at Walmart. I'm gonna be using parchment paper today for painting. Feel free to use, you know, what is it, construction paper, whatever paper you have to protect your surface. You could definitely even like put down an old tablecloth or the ones from the Dollar Tree to protect your surface. So I'm just gonna load this on here. I'm gonna paint all of these white and then we'll move on and paint the next one black. So I actually went and added just a little bit of water to this, so you may notice there's a whole different color of adhesive vinyl in there. So I'm gonna hit go, that one's gonna go so quickly because it's the bunny, but I'm gonna start to paint these. Painting them with the chalk paint is gonna go so fast. And my reasoning of using chalk paint, if you guys have not been following me, is it dries so fast, it's great coverage, and it's just so easy to use. I really, really love it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on this. I'm just using those paint brushes I showed you guys that I hauled in super duper cheap and definitely just, I will, I'll wash them as much as I can, but if I use something that ruins them, I'm not gonna cry about it. All right, so I'm just gonna keep on dipping in here and painting away. 
I'm almost out of this one. I've added a little bit of water to it, but honestly, I'm about out of it. So I'm actually switching to the Starcraft White. So I've added a little bit of water to this one as well. They've just been setting for just a minute. I haven't really used them in the last couple of months. I feel like it's been a hot minute since we've made a, a wood round, especially even just using the white paint, I guess. So it actually helps a lot to add and it doesn't take a lot. So add a little bit of water at a time and stir it around. And that's what just makes it so easy about these chalk paints. You can really tell because it's a lot more smoother. You guys can kind of tell that. It almost reminds me of pancake batter, the way that it'll kind of drain. So if you guys are kind of wondering, but if it's thick, you'll know when it's thick. <laughs> you definitely need to add a little bit of water to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish painting through this one here, and then I'm gonna speed up through the next ones. As you can see, I've already started on my black one, and this one is really, really good. I had to come in here. You can see how smoothly that's moving now. I added just a little bit of water, and this one has got enough in here to drag us along, and its coverage is insane. I'm telling you, they're like a dollar something, maybe a dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty. Very, very affordable, super inexpensive. You could definitely purchase bigger ones, but this has lasted me through so many projects. I think I've got maybe like a quarter of it left, but it really, truly does last a long time. And you can see how effortly that flows, and it's got that matte look. You guys know I'm obsessed with the matte look because I talk about it all the time with adhesive vinyl. If you guys are new here, I love the matte adhesive vinyl over glossy, especially when making signs because it looks hand painted compared to where you can see that gloss and you could tell it's adhesive vinyl. So that's another tip. Also with these signs, I could have created these as a stencil. So whenever I go to weed them, I could weed them in an opposite direction and I could hand paint all of these on, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna keep it very simple by just adding adhesive vinyl on here. Now, I didn't mention earlier, this would be a great gift for somebody, especially if you painted all the signs and you weeded out all of the pieces, gave the transfer tape. This could be a gift for a teenager, it could be a gift for anybody, a housewarming gift to where they could put it together themselves or another great item to sell. Because it is a finished product, you guys are able to sell those because you have the piece of vinyl already ready to go and all of those kind of things. So just another little idea there. Or if you simply have them already made and ready to go as well, that's another gift or a great project to do with the kiddos too. Just to involve the entire family. Each kid could make their own sign and all of that stuff. So there's different sports. You guys are gonna see a really fun baseball one today that I absolutely love. But say for example, we got one kid in cheer and football and all of those things, they could each do their own sign. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish painting this out. We're gonna be ready to go. While our signs are drying down, which is not gonna take very long because it's chalk paint, like I said, you can already hopefully see this black over here a little bit. It's already almost dried down. So in the meantime, this is the perfect time to start weeding everything out. So this is just a good production line to work in. Cutting, painting at the same time, weeding while we're drying. It helps you not rush the process of the drying. You could definitely paint these the night before. That would also help. Go out in the garage and line them all up and do them out there as well back porch patio something like that too all right so whenever it comes to weeding too something that i really love to do is use two different weeding tools i use more of the cricket pick here like so for the bigger stuff filling out the majority and then when it comes to the small stuff i like to use a weeding pen and recently i'm loving the tech wrap if you guys have seen our video i'll link it up above where i did a haul and tested that out which a couple of these are tech wrap today um i'm loving their pens they're just really really fun so but i do recommend those as tools if you guys are new here um because it just kind of helps weeding some of that so let's go ahead and start out with i always like the easy stuff <laughs> so this one right here is actually tech wrap you can see it's really pliable and movable the backing is like a plastic in a sense compared to this one here at Starcraft. So this is paper backing. It's a little bit thicker and heavier compared to this one. But what I have found personally so far is the material feels like the same thickness. I do like this one's a little bit smoother, but once again, I'm new to tech wrap, so I'll see how it wears over time. Also, same note I've talked about before is love the matte colors because they're gonna look hand painted. So what we're gonna do is I always, I, I don't know, I'm a cheater. <laughs> I like to skip on to the easiest stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by weeding out the easy stuff first. It just, I don't know. I, you guys tell me, which way do you guys like to weed? Let me know in the comments below 
What's your favorite way to do it? Do you get the hard stuff over with first or do you guys go in for the easy stuff first? I have found myself to go for the easy stuff first. All right, so there is that. So we're just gonna go ahead. I'll speed this up while I weed all of these out to save you guys the boring details. So easy, I love it. I don't know, anybody else find weeding very satisfying? I do, I love it. Sometimes, unless it's something that's just getting very difficult, I'm like, no longer my friend. <laughs> but stuff like this just makes it so easy. All right, so I also wanted to point out this, this green one right here also is tech wrap. I already pulled off that protective coating because you want to do that before you start cutting. So if you guys are not familiar with tech wrap, they actually put this, it's frosted. So it's kind of hard to tell the color. I wish if they were going to do that, they did it clear just so you could see the exact color. Um, but once again, I talked about that in our tech wrap video. But something too to talk about um, just like the satisfying of weeding, like going in here and see pieces come to life too is uh, just so much fun. Love it. Also, whatever you guys are weeding with a pin like this, if you do it at an angle instead of kind of straight up and down, you do it at an angle, it just makes your life so much easier. It's going to work with you so much better. I say that and then I struggle just a smidge, but it just makes it so much easier. Also, I'll stick it on my hand like this and then kind of keep me a pile over here. Also, whenever it comes to making signs, do you guys prefer glossy adhesive vinyl or do you guys prefer matte? Another little tip is we actually have some TikTok hacks to show you guys some easier ways to weed your vinyl. So say for example, we've done one with an offset to show you how to separate those or add a weeding box just to make it so much easier than weeding. I'll try to link that one up above as well. But right now I have three different signs actually going on here. So to make it easier and, and not lose stuff, I'll actually go in here and separate before I weed. I'll go in here and separate um, those individually so I don't have to try to go with one big piece. Now this one right here that I'm gonna weed, this is actually called a knockout design. So instead of, say for example, weeding out this piece, you're actually weeding out the inside pieces, the pieces you normally would keep. So this is called a knockout design. It's something every crafter wants to know how to do when they first get their machine. Now, I've lost some little pieces of that O there and I'm not concerned about it. I'm gonna leave it. But if you were to do a stencil, this is exactly what it would look like too. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about. But like I said, if you were to create a stencil, this is exactly what it would look like. One more tip in case you guys have not seen this one when it comes to weeding. For pieces like this, take a lint roller and then just have it there on the side so that way you can weed a whole lot faster. So you're just kind of dropping them there on top of your lint roller like so. I have officially weeded everything out, so let's go ahead and clean this guy up. I'm gonna stack up our signs, and let's start putting them together. As you can see, our wood rounds are completely dry and ready to go. Now, if you wanted to, you could definitely add another coat to this if you want to. The white, sometimes you could, you could see a few spots where I was having to double up. This is the first one I did. You could see where I was kind of got a little heavy handed there, but I'm fine with this right here. And as you can see on this one too, I love the matte black. It just it looks like a chalkboard. I love it so, so much. So as you can see here, we've got both of our signs ready to go. All right, so we are ready. We're gonna do our first one, and I'm gonna show you just doing a super easy one. This is one solid design. It actually comes in a couple layers. I just welded everything. So if you wanted to make this a different, each different colors, or make the star different, you could do whatever you wanted to. So this one says, hope you brought beer. I think it's so cute. I should have probably done it about nine and a half, 10. I did it 11, not thinking that with this being a 12 inch circle, that these pieces right here where the circle was going to crop itself off. What I would recommend doing inside of Cricut Design Space, bring in a 12 inch circle, whatever size you're working with, and then size this to fit that exactly how you want to. 
learn from my mistakes. But today, just to be, um, just to keep it going, I'm gonna actually cut a little piece of those off. We're gonna move forward with it, so it's gonna be all right. So what I like to do is I work with the biggest one first, so that way I can reuse these transfer tapes over and over again. So we are going to pick up our first one. I'm just gonna go down like a taco. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that's just how I say it. So we're gonna go down there, and then we are simply going to trim this, and I'll be able to use the same piece multiple times. We're just gonna go ahead and take our squeegee here and just rub this guy in to pick up all of our pieces. So this one, like I said, is so, so easy, of course, Crystal made it too, too big, but it just goes to show you, anybody can make these mistakes. So, you know, when I first started out too, and look, I've been doing it for a, quite a while, quite a while since Cricut first came out, let's just say that. And I'm still making mistakes like this. So the next time you ever make a mistake, or if you're new and you make a mistake, don't feel bad, we all do it. But to learn from my mistake is simply adding that circle inside of Cricut Design Space to help you see exactly what you're working with. We've got our transfer tape, so now we are ready to place it on our sign. So once again, I'm just gonna go down like a taco. You could definitely use your parchment paper hack, which you guys will probably see me do here in just a bit. So I'm gonna try to be real careful. And I may even get rid of that star. If I get rid of the star, I would only have to get rid of, you know, obviously lose a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that down, and I'm just going to lose my star here. So I'm just gonna cut that guy off. And actually, I'm just not gonna lay it down. I'm actually gonna peel that back off, so that way I don't have to waste any of my transfer tape. So we'll get that guy out of the way. We're gonna take our squeegee here. Now, if this was me in real life and I wasn't sitting here recording, I would actually just recut this out, but I'm gonna be completely honest and transparent. I ran out of black adhesive vinyl. I never do. I always buy the roll and I keep it stored underneath here. I thought I had a backup roll and this is it. This is it. How close have you guys ever been? Let me know in the comments below. If you've been working on a project and you guys got so far in and you realized you didn't have that color or you didn't have enough of the color. So you have like half a page of blue and you need an entire page. Let me know in the comments below. Raise your hand if that has happened to you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and squeegee this down. And then I'm gonna be very careful because that H is gonna to wanna to come up with me. I'm just gonna kind of tack it down to the table because I'm gonna cut that off here in just a sec. All right, so we are going to save this guy. Just simply tack it down, stick it to something, and we're gonna keep on trucking. So what I'm gonna do now is take a pair of scissors and we are going to trim these pieces away. Just like so. So if you ever find yourself in a pickle and this is all you have, you're making it for yourself and you're like, you know what, we're not gonna waste it. Do what I'm doing today. <laughs> all right, so what I'm gonna do now, you guys can see that here, is I'm actually just folding these pieces over. So we're just folding those over just like that. So there we have it. You guys be a judge in the comments below. Let me know, would you have just waited, maybe done it in another color, waited for that to come in? What would you do for this one? Next up, let's work on our Easter one. Now this one obviously is round, so we don't have to worry about it. So it is gonna fit on here absolutely perfect, and then it's gonna be easy as adding in our bunny. So let's go ahead and do it. So as you can see, I'm working for my next biggest design. So I'm gonna go down like a taco, take my squeegee, and I'm going to pick this up. So I'm just gonna go either each of these lines here, just like so and remove the backing. All right, very carefully, I'm gonna line this up, trying to get it even on the top and the bottom. And then I'm just gonna smooth all of these pieces out, just like that. Take my squeegee, and get those pieces in place. There we have it. And then we're gonna remove our transfer tape. I really love the way that this is looking. It just gives me beach vibes. I don't know what it is. I'm ready for spring. These colors are gorgeous. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys here really quickly. Love this. So we're just gonna smooth that out. But like you could see with this big piece, I didn't have to cut down two huge pieces. Now we're gonna start to bring it down. So I'm going to get this guy on our bunny here. And I could actually get this guy down without even cutting it right away. So we're gonna try that just in case I need a little bit of a bigger piece. Take our squeegee again. And we're gonna pick up our super cute bunny. 
flip it over and peel. All right, so this bunny is gonna go right in the center. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that there. Trying to keep it nice and centered. One thing to keep in mind when you guys are making these wood rounds too, is to be careful because if we have that big bow, it could take away a part of the top design. So just be mindful for that. Sometimes you may want to scoot stuff down just a little bit. All right, so we're going to carefully peel. Set this guy out of the way. And there we have it, how cute. I love that. It's so precious and it's ready for Easter. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this down now because the majority of the pieces are going to be about, you know, half the size of this transfer because it is getting a little bit wonky. So whenever you're working with these for a half minute, you will know that they start to get a little bit wonky. <laughs> so, but that still gives me two pieces. So I'm gonna go down with our transfer tape again and pick this up. Just trying to keep everything kind of nice and straight and smooth. You may notice that it kind of wrinkles on top here. That's on the transfer. You may have noticed it on the bunny one and whenever I put it down on the sign, it didn't go on the sign like that. So we're just gonna squeeze that down, flip this over and get ready to apply it. So I know I'm trying to keep that little bit of a gap at the bottom and then we're gonna have our next one and then the top is obviously just solid white. So we are gonna get that there. We're gonna squeegee that guy down and peel at an angle. All right, last up, we're gonna do the same thing. Pick this guy up here. There we go. Also, you guys let me know in the comments below if you guys ever used to come hang out with us live. If you guys miss those lives and you wanna see them come back, let us know in the comments below because we would definitely be interested to know your thoughts on that. I know a lot of you guys have been commenting about it and um, asking where we're at, what's going on, but we were switching things up just a little bit. Um, I know that we possibly have a live coming very soon, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you guys hit that notification bell because you don't wanna miss it. But if you do miss our lives and you wanna see us bring them back, let us know because we're, we're definitely down to do that. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna take this piece and whenever I do this, I'm kind of lining up my sides here and just keeping that little bit of a gap just like that, all right? Get those down, squeegee. Love the way that this one came out. So you can definitely see on that O and F, I really should have went back for my small pieces. There we go. Now, a lot of these signs, I have all of these linked down below, they come with bundles. So this came out of a complete bundle of 4th of July ones. Um, for example, I'm fixing to work on a summer one that came out of a summer bundle. The Easter one came out of an Easter bundle. So definitely make sure you guys check those out. But there you guys have it. How gorgeous is this? And that bow is gonna set right here on top of that white piece. So keep that in mind. But I love that. So easy, so simple, gorgeous. All right, so as you can see, I'm trying to use this transfer tape as long as I can. We are going to pick up our next one here. All right, there we have it. I'm gonna start from the bottom, kind of going up. This is another one that kind of works in the middle down and that bow is gonna be at the top. I love, love, love this one. My kids are no longer in ball, but I have a dear friend this is going to be perfect for. So we are going to Get that down. Love the font on this one too, it is gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna get that one down. Now this was a single design, but it's one that I've been wanting to make for so long, so I had to include it today. And I also wanted to show you, it's not always just about holidays either. It could be funny, if you were having a party, it'd be perfect time to put the beer one. Um, if it's 4th of July, switch it up a holiday, right? But you could have them to where it's like we're at the ball field. You know, it's just, it's so much fun for ball season. So don't just think about the holidays. I've seen there's so many ones for like dogs and cats and kids, grandma with kids, so many different ones. All right, so we are going to pick this piece up. I'm gonna get it down first and then I'll get my stitching in for the ball. All right, so here we go. We've got our transfer ready. I'm just going to line this guy up here. Just like so. And I know so far I've not had to show the parchment, but really haven't lined anything up yet. So I don't know with the next one. You know what? I almost forgot. Let's see if I can carefully pick this up. Get that ball. Oh, well, that's okay. You know what I did and I didn't need it. I cut out the baseball with white. I don't even need the baseball because the backing's white. <laughs> don't even ask. And I almost started panicking. And I was like, get it up. So always make sure you have all of your pieces lined up first before you apply those down. 
All right, so we're going to hold it at an angle and peel. I'm going to pick up my stitching just like this. So get that stitching there, squeegee, all right, and peel. Okay, we have it. Line up our stitching there, gorgeous. And you can lay that stitching however you wanted to if you wanted the ball to kind of be turned. Don't feel like you have to go exactly as we have it designed up for you, but look at this, it is gorgeous. I love that, I'm gonna bring it up to this one really quick so you can see that. I love this one so, so much. And like I said, I have been wanting to make this one for a long time. If you guys have already made this or you've been wanting to make one like this too, let me know in the comments below. This would make a great gift for a mom or dad with a kiddo in bulk, even a grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle. These are perfect. So definitely make sure you guys check this one out. For our next one, we're gonna do a really fun summer one. Once again, came out of an awesome bundle, but gorgeous, gorgeous designs. And so I went with this one here. And so I try to do a bunch of like spring summer designs because we're obviously working in the spring and summer, unless you guys are watching this at Christmas time, then feel free to start working on those Christmas ones or you know, fall, Halloween. This would be perfect for a teacher too, for her classroom door, so cute. We have tons of teacher door rounds as well. All right, so we are going to work with our very first piece here. So we're gonna get this guy down. Same thing, we are going to pay attention, leaving that little bit of a gap around at the sides. Just gives us that little bit of a border there. All right, squeegee this guy down. And you guys can see I use that one piece of transfer tape all the way across the board. All right, so we're gonna hold this and peel. There we go. I love that green, it's so gorgeous. Bring it up so you guys can see how fun is that it reminds me of a you know hawaiian shirt or something like that next one we are going to because i believe this hello summer is going to come right on top and then we need this piece here so let's go ahead and pop down that hello summer first like i said take your time line things up all right so you get this guy here squeegee Remove the backing. Now for the really fun part to bring this guy to life, we are going to do our flamingo. So I'm going to start to work on this piece here. Now that I know that I don't need all of this, I'm going to trim away this bottom piece just so I'm not having to fuss with it. Because once again, as you're using that same piece, you're gonna notice it start to really get wonky and silly. So we're gonna get it out of the way. And also you may notice in the camera too that I have hair. Uh, I've dropped this several times on the floor. We've got dog hair, we've got all kinds of stuff going on, but it's still workable, okay? So we're gonna get that out of the way and we're gonna get this guy right up here. This is gonna be one of my favorites too. Love the ballpark, but I really love the colors on this. It's just going to add a little bit of color to the door whenever we hang this one up. All right, so we're gonna carefully peel go perfect and let's go ahead and go in here and add our wing all right so I've got that wing ready we're just gonna go right here so I got off just a little bit, but I'm okay with it. So don't hate yourself. Don't get upset with yourself when you get off just a little bit, unless you're selling it. Don't hate yourself, but it's fine. You know, it happens. And do they know? Maybe that's a little bit of shadow or depth that you can see. They don't know. It is, I, I love it. It's still fine. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ready. I'm gonna add in the beak here, and then we're going to add in the eye and this little black part of the nose. Now I accidentally, when I was weeding, forgot about these pieces and I tr cut that nose just a little bit, but I saved it. So I'm able to, I'm gonna be able to put that together. All right, so we're just simply going to, I've just cut this guy down really little. Once you get down to your small pieces, you can really start to trim up that um, transfer or carrier sheet, if you will. So we are going to get our beak on here, rub that down. There we have it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this first part here and then I'll line up that last piece. Alright, squeegee that in. 
and pill. And there you have it. It is so cute. I absolutely love the colors of this one. You guys let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts of this one? Love, love, love it. And let me know down below, which one was your favorite? Which one will you be recreating? Love it. All right, so here's for the fun part. Let's put our sign together. All right, so here goes the fun part. As you can see, I've actually lined this up. You see how it just pops off the black? And it's actually gonna stand up just a little bit like this because we're gonna have those magnets. But one thing that we need to do is get this on here, figure out the center of that, but keep in mind we're gonna have our bow and all of those things. So you can figure out your greenery here. Now keep in mind too, I'm gonna to kinda of turn this like this because this is gonna be hidden under that bow, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this and then I will, you can definitely play around with these leaves too a little bit more once we kinda of get them down. But I'm gonna also, whoop, Need to bend this direction, bend this guy down just a little bit like that. And it may only take two because we could possibly even get these out just a little bit like that. And so whenever I go to have this here, which that bow is gonna hide it too. So as you can see here, whenever we go to put that down, those are gonna be pretty much hidden underneath here. So we can kind of play around with these and figure out about what's going to look best there, kind of have something like that. But what I actually wanna do is I wanna make my bow first, kind of get that going on, and then I'll play around with this greenery here. Cause I almost kind of want it going down the sides like that, maybe. And so I'll kind of figure out how I'm gonna lay that somewhere about like that. But once again, that's gonna kind of be hidden just like that. And I really think probably two of those, it's gonna be okay. Or we could definitely spruce it up and make them two. I think we need two, okay? So we're going to, I'm gonna interlock these two, something like that. And so whenever we go to glue those down. Now for my bow, my thought process of this was, you can make multiple bows. So say for example, I want a pink bow to go with my spring ones or a purple or something like that, but then I want to use a plaid, you know, just different ones. So I could definitely make a couple different bows and I can also have it on a magnet system as well. That way I can swap out my bows too. I know, super genius, right? So let's go ahead and put together our bow. You could definitely do this by hand or you can use something like a bow dabra to do that. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Using our bow dabra, let's make a bow. So we're just gonna get this guy down here. First things first, you can take yourself a zip tie or string. I'm just using the little string that comes with it. It's got a little wire in there. You wanna get that down first. And then you wanna go ahead and get an end going on here. So what we're gonna do is you're going to be twisting and turning. So you're gonna figure out your loops. So say I want my loop something like this. I'm going to twist this guy just like this, kind of twist it around and get it down, just like that, all right? And so we want to have the exact same size. I can go ahead and get me a little bit of this going on here. And so I wanna do the exact same thing on this side. So I wanna have the exact same loop. We're going to twist it when we go down. So each time you wanna twist this thing. So depending on how many loops that you want on each side, so say for example, I'm gonna do four and four, which would be eight loops. I'm obviously gonna do this four times. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to do the rest. We're on our last loop here. So just twisting there, trying to keep them the same size. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make that same tail that I have there. So we're just gonna twist that around until it is in the correct direction. And then now I'm gonna cut it. So we're just gonna go ahead and get our tail going on here and I can get those tails the way that I want them here in just a bit. So now what you wanna do at this point, you can use this little included thing here that just kind of squishes that down, helps you work with it. Especially if you were doing like multiple colors and stuff like that. Love this guy, especially if you guys are not good at making bows. If you guys have not even seen, I've actually showed you guys some pretty easy ways to make bows using zip ties in your hands. So if you wanna see something like that, let me know, but this guy's pretty inexpensive. You can grab it locally at like Hobby Lobby and stuff, but I did get this one here, I do believe, from Amazon. I either got it at Hobby Lobby or Amazon, but I'll have it linked below. They make two different sizes. All right, so we are gonna go ahead now and just squeeze this tight. So I'm just taking that little, um, I'm gonna call it around the string, and I'm gonna tie it one more time just like this, just to get that going, and now we have our bow. So at this point, we're gonna go in here and we are going to fluff out all of these pieces. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm getting my, um, my tails here towards the bottom and then I'm just sprucing out those loops. Now for me, what I'm gonna do, you could definitely do something with just a little bit of 
um, an angle here, which maybe that's what I'll do. If not, if you wanted to do an angle, just definitely cut it like this. Or if you want to, you can fold it in half and then you can also cut it like so. I'm gonna go ahead and cut mine at an angle, just like so. I'm gonna do a opposite sides. There we have it, perfect. And you can tell this one's a little bit longer, but how cute is this, right? And I can make multiple of these. So I did get two different ones. This one has the wire in it, which honestly, this one does not have the best wire that I've ever seen. This one does not have wire, but now I can switch those out and I could get more ribbon. So what I'm going to do is just kind of test this to see if I put that there, where would this sit? And I'll be able to play with it each time. I'm gonna be able to pop that guy up there at the top just like that. All right, so let's get that out of the way. So let's go ahead and start with our magnet system because before I attach those or any of that greenery, we are going to attach our magnet system first. So we're going to take the pack of 12 right here. We're going to open it up and we're going to get ready to go. I'm definitely going to use the E6000 for this just because the sign is outside in the elements. Um, I use a hot glue gun too, but if you definitely want to avoid like the hot glue melting with a high heat, definitely use something like an E6000. Plus you're using strong magnets. I would just definitely do it. So as you can see here, whenever you purchase these magnets from the Dollar Tree, they come in a set of two like this. So I'm actually gonna glue them down like that. So that way then I can add glue to the top and then glue it down to the bottom, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do, you could probably even get away with one on each side, but I feel like it's gonna teeter totter. So we're going to do four of these just like this. Now I did see, I got inspiration from this. I forgot to mention that way back at the beginning. I did find inspiration for this on a TikTok. I believe I seen it on TikTok or either it was on a YouTube short somewhere. I just seen the interchangeable of this and I was like, we have to do this. So that's where I got my inspiration in case you guys are wondering. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take some E6000 and I'm just going to glue a little bit on the bottom here and pop that down just like so. So just a little bit of glue on the bottom and we're popping it down. Let these dry for just a minute. Then we're gonna come back, we're gonna add a drop of glue to each one of these, flip it over, get it nice and centered, and that way we're gonna be good to go. Now for my bow, while we're waiting for this to dry, let's go ahead and work on adding some to the bow. I am gonna use hot glue, it's just gonna be easier to work with. So for the bow part, for the other piece, I'll use E6000. I'm gonna use those smaller ones that came with 14 count, so we're gonna use these smaller ones for the bow. That way I have a little bit more room up there to get that down, and so let's go ahead and attach it to the bow. So for my bow, I'm going to kind of get it right down here towards the bottom of the bow, so that way I can get it nice and high up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the hot glue, add a little bit of that glue here to the bottom, and then just right down here in the middle of my bow, I'm gonna attach that magnet. And what I'm also gonna do is add a little bit of glue in between these couple of layers, just to kind of help hold that down too, so the weight does, of the magnet doesn't really kind of shift that around. Once I get this down, I can really shift these two and play around with those loops. Now I think those have dried down enough just to work with flipping this around. So we are going to just add a dot each one of these. You just wanna be careful that that glue is not gonna go down the sides and accidentally glue the two magnets together. That obviously would not be good. All right, so we are going to flip this guy around and I'm going to center it up. Perfect. So now what I wanna do is I don't want to mess with this. I have it right where I want it. So I'm just pushing down so that way that um, E6000 can set into place. Double check before I really set it and walk away. All right, so we're gonna set this aside, let it dry for just a minute. But in the meantime, now I can start to figure out where my bow goes because that one is down. So we can actually do that in the process. So let's go ahead and play around with these and figure out where I want these to go. I'm gonna kind of get this one. And they can go on top of that sign there because the way that the sign's gonna kind of tuck up on top and over, if that makes sense, underneath, underneath those, underneath those. So we're gonna go ahead and get these two. Something like this I think is gonna look gorgeous. So I will glue these pieces in a minute, but I could go ahead and get my bow down now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add E6000 to this one, just like this, just a little bit and I'm going to attempt to try and get this all the way up here at the top. 
So at first, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of pressure to this. I'm just gonna hold this in place because of the awkwardness of the bow and everything. I don't want it to lift itself up and not actually dry down. One thing that I thought about after the fact, but I tried to carefully lift it and it's already starting to set, is you could go ahead and get your E6000, add a tiny dot of your hot glue just to help hold it in position while those are drying. You can do the same thing with the magnets, honestly. In the meantime, just to secure these, I'll add the rest of the glue in just a second underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate these and carefully add a little bit of hot glue where I can just to hold them in place so I know exactly where I want them to be. So I, I'm not ready to adjust this. So what I'm actually doing is I'm just ever so carefully gonna rotate it just so I can see. I'm getting my hot glue gun and I'm going to just get it right here underneath along these pieces here on the sides. Just something to kind of hold that guy in position so it doesn't move. Lift it. There we go. So that way whenever I go to lift this, it's not gonna get out of my way. Same thing on this side. I'm just getting a little glue underneath here so I can hold these guys in place so they don't move on me. So as you can see how super cute this is coming together, but imagine swapping out that bow to match your summer colors or match the spring, 4th of July, so many fun things. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up the other side. Now that I was able to separate those, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I have this guy glued down all the way. So I'm just gonna go down here and add some glue to where this guy is not going to move. So I'm gonna make sure that does not get on my bow, which I could actually just move my bow out of the way. So as you can see, I'm just kind of getting it around the sides just to kind of hold it there in place. There we have it. All right, perfect. Get that back on there and heating up. So I just want those to be able to stay in place as we play around with our sign. Obviously over time, over years. So you just wanna get those glued down. Once again, anything that's underneath here, you can't see it anyway. So to work on the next, what we're going to do is we are going to take our next set of magnets. And so we're just going to apply these whichever way they're going to go on here. Cause you know, a magnet only will go together one way. And so we're going to pop those guys on there just like that. So what I'm going to do this time is instead of using the E6000, it's just taking so long to glue for the video purposes. I definitely, it's gonna take time. If you're gonna glue it the same way I am, just to line those up, be prepared for it to take a while. So I'm gonna honestly just move on to the hot glue gun and if I struggle with something over time, like the heat, it's knocking a sign down, then I'm gonna go back and add E6000, let it dry. But for now, I'm just gonna move on and let it do its thing. So what I'm gonna do is line this up, try to look at it again, making sure everything looks good and quickly get those down while our glue is still hot. We may have to do them one at a time. If you have to do that, that's totally fine too because you could get a magnet, take it off, get a magnet, you know, that way your glue doesn't go so fast. I have a ceiling fan going right now, so that's what's kind of hindering me just a little bit. All right, so we've got that. We can lift it up and all four of them are there. It's just going to work so much faster, you <laughs> guys. So at this point, I recommend using the hot glue gun just to be super quick. E6000 to really last over time. See how easy that just pops on? And look at how cute that is. Let me add the bow really quick so we can completely visualize the entire thing. Look at how cute. Is that not gorgeous to hang on the door? Swapping these things out. All right, I'm gonna keep on moving on. Now I will link below some magnets too on Amazon if you can't find these at your local Dollar Tree because that's normally where I get mine from, but I didn't have them on hand, but so pumped that the Dollar Tree had them. I'm just throwing that out there. All right, we've got our next set of magnets. So I'm just going to add my hot glue and have my sign ready to go. While those magnets dry in between each layer, I figured it'd be perfect time to show you guys how gorgeous. I am so excited. This is by far gonna be my favorite project I've made so far in 2023, which is still the beginning, but even back to 2022, this is amazing. It is so much fun. Love, love, love it. All right, so we just gave it a second. You can see that's just working so much faster. So now let's move on to the next. So cute, but I could definitely picture this one. This may even work too, but I could really picture this one with a nice Easter bow. Gorgeous. So cute. I am absolutely loving this. Like I said, you guys drop down in the comments below which one is your favorite. Oh my gosh. I absolutely love it. 
So there we go. Because of the magnets, we're gonna be able to store them all together too. So it's gonna hold them all together and in place. So that way we don't have to have these all over the place. It's awesome and we'll be able to just quickly go through and get the one we want. Last but not least, the one we started off with and I refuse to give up on, we're gonna go ahead and see how cute it still looks even though I had to crop off the sides. All right, here we go. We're gonna get that guy down, out on the bow. So cute. I'm so glad because, like I said, the TikTok, I got inspiration or the short, wherever I found it. I need to start writing names down so we can kind of reference those. But it didn't show the interactive bow at all. I just seen how they had these interactives and I seen magnets and I thought, we're making that thing. And see, because of that bow, you can't even tell that I've cropped it that much because of the bow and the greenery and all that. So honestly, you weren't even able to tell. And I forgot to add the magnets on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave these ones here because they pulled themselves up. That's okay. I'm gonna scrape the little bit of glue off of this one. And then I'm just gonna go back here and I can see where the other ones are. And we're gonna glue those guys back down. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of glue here to pop the one on this side. And then we're gonna go back, we're gonna add glue. So please, once again, learn from my mistakes today. I was so excited to get this last one together. I bet you anything, as you guys were watching that go down, you guys were like, no! And as I was trying to take that guy off, I'm like, what is wrong with this thing? Well, Crystal, that's what's wrong with <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm gonna scrape off that little bit of adhesive and we're gonna try this one more time. Let's try it again. So we're gonna pop our magnets on and this time they are not obviously just glued <laughs> to itself. Pop our bow back on. All right, so we have fixed this one. Luckily, easy fix, pay attention. All right, so we're gonna pop this guy off and we're going out to the ball game tonight. So we're just gonna get it right underneath the bow there and pop it on. So stinking fun. Get it out of the way. And guess what? Summertime. And it's so much fun because you could definitely do this weekly or monthly or whatever you wanted to do to just have a whole bunch of fun or by event. Somebody's birthday party, anniversary, housewarming. So much fun. Love it. All right. So let's go ahead and check out the last two. We are ready for 4th of July. This one's gonna be one of my favorites too. Love it, so simple, so easy, gorgeous. And if you weren't looking too hard, you wouldn't notice that I lost the little O and the F, but we all know we did. So, so we've already been there, so we, we're already committed. All right, so we've got our Easter bunny on here. So gorgeous, but for this one, I probably will swap out the bow. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you guys like this bow with all of them? Or what bow, what colors do you think I should do differently? If you guys have made it all the way to the end, thank you guys so much for hanging hanging out with us today. I hope you guys have enjoyed making this sign. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are gonna be recreating this sign or if you guys have found inspiration along the way to go out and make a sign of your own, whether it's interactive or not. Um, let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. I miss you guys so much. And like I said, let me know if you guys wanna see us go live again. And if so, what do you guys wanna see us do? Let us know what projects you guys are looking for. Thank you guys so much again for hanging out with us and if you guys are new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as that notification bell down below so you don't miss any of our crafting tutorials.